stories are birthed in some kind of culture. It's really clear when you watch a foreign movie and you hear it in a different language, set perhaps in a different time, in a certain location, but always in a certain culture. Now some foreign films cross over quite easily, but others don't. It's interesting how culture can impact the quality of a story. We discover in Acts 17 whether this gospel message that's been birthed in Judaic culture can cross the boundaries into Greek culture. Paul finds himself in Athens, the key city known for its philosophy, known for its thinking. Will the Christian gospel work in such a place? Paul has been deserted by Silas and Timothy. They've been stranded at an early location and Paul is all alone as he wanders around Athens, this ancient city full of idols and full of ideas. He begins sharing the message in the synagogue, but also in the marketplace. And if people are intrigued, they don't fully understand what he's talking about, but he gets given the opportunity to speak at Mars Hill. This was a huge rock where religious and ethical things were discussed. Paul takes the opportunity with both hands. He's keen to speak for a great number of people at once. But by taking this opportunity, he's really going to see if the gospel stands up to some of the greatest thinkers of the time. Before Paul takes the opportunity, he's already spent time looking around Athens, understanding what the culture is all about. And it's full of idols, this place. But Paul doesn't condemn the place because of its idolatry. In fact, he begins his speech by saying, I can see that you people are very religious. He doesn't condemn their culture, but he begins to see how he can share and communicate the Christian faith relevantly. He begins by picking up on an altar, which the Greeks have made to the unknown God. The idea being they were afraid of missing off a certain God, and they made this altar for the unknown God. Paul begins by explaining that this God can now be known. This is the God of all creation. From there, Paul begins to quote some of their poetry. He affirms certain things about their culture and critiques other things about their culture. He begins to explain that a God cannot be contained in things made by human hands but that this God who's been unknown can now be known. He finishes off by calling the people listening to repent, to turn their lives around. Some of them ridicule him, but some of them accept the message. This gospel that was birthed in Judaic culture has crossed into the philosophical culture of the Greeks it makes sense to some of the greatest thinkers of that time. Today, we need to learn from Paul's approach for how to share the Christian faith. Paul doesn't just condemn culture, but he engages with culture. And he discovers what God is already doing, the questions people are already asking. Often we have the mentality that we have to bring God to people but in fact, God is already wooing people towards him. Our role is to work alongside God, to find out the questions and the things that he's already doing, and to help people on that journey of faith, of coming to know him. Today, let's look around and see what God is up to.